This segment brought to you by Stern AG, one of the few remaining privately owned brokerage firms in all of America. They've been around since 1901. They've survived waves of consolidation, waves of mergers, buyouts, all by sticking to their principles and by faithfully serving their clients across all 50 states, including Tennessee and right here in Knoxville. If you are in need of financial advice for your future, get in touch with Stern AG. Remember that name, Stern AG and then call them right here in Knoxville. They'll do a good job for you. All right. Uh, very quickly here, time for the lightning round. Back with Jimmy, Bob, David, and Shazan. I got everybody's names right. Uh, I'm going to start with you guys. Uh, Butch Jones challenged his seniors yesterday after the game, said he wants his leaders uh, to get in there and, and make sure that this team fights, uh, make sure that they get to a bowl game. I don't think there's anything wrong with making those kind of challenges, but they're made for every team that has a losing record in the United States. They work sometimes, sometimes they don't. Why would this work if it works? I think I think it would work because these guys are so desperate to try anything to win through their whole career. They just haven't had a lot of success. And here you have a guy, you look at his past, he's one where, where he's been at, and this is what he says to do. We're going to go out and do it, and we'll listen to him. They remember what you do in November. That's what they yeah. used to tell me. And, um, you know, it's it, it's big. This is Coach Jones' first year here. And, and th these guys are actually his, his first players that were, were given to him. And it, it would be super important for him to always remember the effort that I put forth and exactly what happens. All right, guys, we'll switch over here to Bob and Jimmy. Uh, Butch Jones said after the game also that he's worried about injuries like Worley, Randolph, Moore. Uh, is UT deep enough to get two more wins and reach a bowl game? They got Missouri on the road. They got Auburn, who's top 10. They've got uh, Vanderbilt, depending on their situation. They got Kentucky. Are they deep enough to win two more? I think so because I think they're deep enough to beat Vanderbilt and Kentucky. Okay. So that would be two more. So I'm, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yeah for today, but they are on the verge of, of I think, losing so many guys that maybe Vanderbilt comes into play. Well, it's already I, in I, play. I, yeah, I it's already in play, but I think it becomes maybe in doubt if you get the wrong mm -hmm. people hurt. Yeah, I see Vandy as 50-50 right now. All right. Uh, Butch Jones, this is for everybody, Butch Jones called Alabama the red team all week because he didn't want his players hearing that name and immediately going in the tank, fear of the word Alabama. Mm -hmm. Naturally, Alabama took it and used it to motivate themselves. A.J. McCarron said that it was uh, not showing uh, respect to their team. He said the players wanted Tennessee to know that they're worthy of the name Alabama. Do you think we will hear about the red team next year from Butch Jones? I hope so. You, you I'm going to refer to them as the red team from now on. <laughs> I love it. Oh, see, I, I think those things are kind of silly. Oh, yeah. and I, I don't think he meant it out of any disrespect what, at all. What he was no, saying he to, his, to his players, hey, don't panic. It's just number next. These are the guys we're playing yeah. next. And here we go. The, the, the thing is, though, anything you say, if he had said, hey, what do you think of Alabama? They're a really good team. Oh, so we're not great. I mean, that's what players do. You guys mm -hmm. know that. Yeah. You've used everything yeah. you could. You, would you use red team again? I, that said, I, I would not use I, it again. I wouldn't either, and I wouldn't even call them Team X. Because if you call them Team X, and they're going to turn that around into yeah. some motivational deal. Just stick with Alabama and beat them. No, no. red team always makes me think of communists. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hodge, it's, it's 1963 in your world. All right. Uh, finally, one last Halloween horror, pre-Halloween horror here. The thing that wouldn't die. In case you haven't seen this, let's see, we, we do have a full screen here, I thought. Maybe. Do we? Okay. Anyway, uh, John, there we go. John Gruden said, yesterday this story came out. I would like to give coaching one more try. How's that for perfect, try, perfect, perfect uh. timing? I can't speak. As we say there, this is a public service announcement. No, just don't, don't start that. <laughs> Tennessee lost yesterday. I'm just praying that no one starts the, you know, John Gruden was spotted at the Burger King out on Chapman Highway. <laughs> Uh, I want Butch Jones at Tennessee and John Gruden in Minnesota. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Put him with the Vikings. All right. Guys, thank you very much. Jimmy, Bob, David, Shazan, I appreciate it. We'll see all thank of you. you again next week. Uh, coming up next segment, we're going to do the Cavaliers line. Uh, we're going to pick the Missouri game, not knowing who Tennessee's quarterback is going to be. And we're going to do the Pearl Pulpit, as usual. And this week it's going to be yet another. He's, he's back in the mood of having to rejuvenate a fan base after yesterday. <laughs> so uh, we got a lot more coming up. Come on back to the Richmond Sports Week.